Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I'm gonna sit here, I'm gonna put some makeup on my face, I'm gonna chat, answer some of your questions, catch you up on everything that's going on in my life at the moment, because there's a few major updates, um, so I thought I would just sit down and chat and do a little get ready with me Q&A old school type video. So if you wanna chill with me and just have me on in the background, that is absolutely fine. Go grab a drink. Join me, not like alcohol, just anything. Well, I mean, if you want to drink alcohol on a whatever day that this is going up evening, then by all means do, but I'm just drinking some fizzy squash. Let me know what you're drinking down below. I asked on Instagram if anybody had any questions about anything that was going on. And I feel like even since then stuff happened. The first question I'm going to answer says, how is life, Soph? Thank you for always motivating me. I mean, first of all, thank you. That is a compliment that I have motivated you. I'm not sure quite doing what, but um, I am glad that I've been able to help. Life at the moment is is generally pretty good. My year didn't start off perfectly well. If you've watched some of my recent videos, you will have seen that I basically developed this rash out of nowhere. Well, kind of out of nowhere. I was ill just before Christmas. I think it was two videos ago that I spoke about this if you wanted to like be up to date on the full story, but I developed something called Pitariasis rosea or rosea, which I had never heard of before. It was quite scary. Um, It was literally all over my body and it has now been, it developed on Christmas day. So as I'm filming this, it's been five and a half weeks since it just appeared out of the blue all over my body and it's still not fully gone. It says online when you read about it that it will just disappear on its own supposedly and it can take up to 12 weeks. For me it's been about five and a half weeks. I still have small patches left on my legs and if I just, hang on, I don't even know if this is actually going to show up on camera. I don't know how well you can see on my arm here. I think maybe you can see a little bit but I've now been left with like slightly lighter patches of skin where the rash was and I'm hoping that they will fade because I've kind of got like circular blotches almost like where it's scarred a little bit where some of the rash marks were. I've got one like just there. Here. There's still a few patches on my legs. I did like a whole Instagram and TikTok thing about it, but basically the only place that I didn't have it was my face, thank God, and my hands and my feet, and everywhere else had a rash. And yeah, I still have a little bit of like redness from some of the marks on my legs, which is just weird. Like, I don't know, it was such a weird thing, but thankfully, it's nearly gone. I actually forgot how nice this foundation is. The Lancome Idol Ultra Wear Foundation. I'm testing a few more, or like digging back into my collection and retesting some of my foundations because I'm trying to figure out which foundation I'm gonna wear on my wedding day. So I'm like, you know, testing a few of them because I do test so many that I kind of forget which ones are good or not. And a few people asked how I got rid of the Pitariasis Rosea. Honestly, I feel like it probably just faded by itself, but I did do quite a few things to try and help. And I don't really know if they did or not because obviously I have no comparison. This is just what I did. I was taking L-lysine supplements that I got in Holland and Barrett. I was taking vitamin D tablets and turmeric tablets every day. And I feel like when I did start doing that, it started to clear up a bit more. I was using like a whole bunch of different creams, like moisturizing creams. On the really, really bad patches, I was using a steroid cream, but I barely used that because I was too scared to use it because I know that that can cause a whole load of issues, anti-itch creams. Having almost daily baths in like salt water, tea tree, pretty much everything that people were trying on Google and on Reddit forums to try and clear it up. I tried every single thing, but thankfully I seem to be on the other side of that now. And other than that, generally at the moment, life is pretty good. Um, I would say that I've had quite a lot of boring admin stuff in January that just comes with like being self-employed. I just got back from a trip to New York with Sephora Collection, which was such a cool experience. The fact that Sephora Collection, and by the way, Sephora Collection is like their own brand stuff. It was myself and Snatched by Will from the UK. And then the others were from France, the USA and Canada. So it was a huge honor to be selected to go on that trip because Sephora is one of those brands that obviously we've only just got in the UK, but I've grown up every time I went to France, when I was a kid, I would beg my family to let us go to Sephora and it would usually either buy nothing, I just wanted to go and have a look around, or I would buy like one thing. Um, and there was a time I remember where my dad went to, I think he went to Spain. If he would go to Europe, he would come back with like one Sephora item for me. He'd got me like their own mini perfumes over the years. I remember one time he brought me back a liquid highlighter and it was always just so exciting. Like he would come back with a little Sephora bag with like one thing in it. And that was just so exciting. And so the fact that all these years later, I got to go on a trip with them. It was so cool. And I was so honored to have been invited on that trip in the first place because I've not actually worked with Sephora until literally the, the very start of this year. And I was there for literally one full day 
day, which seems crazy. They did ask if I would like to move my flight and extend my trip. But I decided not to do that because I was like, I do not know New York at all. And I didn't feel like, if I'm honest, I didn't feel completely comfortable staying in New York by myself, which when I got back, I kind of regretted because I was like, Ugh, I'm sure it's fine. But just because it's like unfamiliar territory, I was just thinking, you know, like booking a hotel in New York by myself as a young woman, like those kind of things just scare me. I mean, like fine if I'm in London, but in New York, which I'd not been to in my adult life, I was just not brave enough to do that. But maybe I should have taken them up on that opportunity and been there a bit longer because we flew in on one day and then had a full day of activities and then obviously went to bed, woke up the next day, had that full day. And then the next day I flew home and we had a little bit of free time in the morning, which was really cool. But yeah, it was a very quick trip to New York, but I absolutely loved it. And I would love to go back and actually explore and do some more things that are sort of on like the New York tourist bucket list kind of thing. So I would definitely go back at some point, but it was a really cool trip. Although if I'm completely honest, I did struggle at times on the trip because a lot of the other influences there were very extroverted and I'm very introverted. And so I was really like to try and push myself to talk to people and like make an effort with people and be on like my A game and not seem like I was just being super shy. I found it quite difficult. And again, if I'm being completely honest, like sometimes on these trips, I just feel like I don't fit in with everyone, which is such a horrible feeling. Like I'm sure if people have been through that at like school and work and just general life, but don't get me wrong, I loved the trip. I just had a few moments where I was like, you know, like really pushing myself out of my comfort zone. But I am so glad that I went and like, what a cool experience. And yeah, an absolute honor to have been picked to go really, because they have so many people that could have chosen. By the way, what have I used so far? The Lancome foundation, and I never know which shade this is because it's got so many bloody numbers on the back. It says 01, then it says 40NN00. Then I used the Rare Beauty Concealer in 170W. I used the Fenty Butter Biscuit Bronzer. And then the blush actually was the Elf Camo Liquid Blush, which I tested one of these, I think in my last video, but this is a different shade, which is called Peach Perfect, which actually I think for fair skin, this will be absolutely stunning. It's a little bit maybe light for me at the moment, but it's just like a really nice natural blush. These are so good as well. They're only seven pounds. What an absolute bog. And then my powder, I finally got two replacements of my ColourPop No Filter Setting Powder. I say finally, these arrived before Christmas. I just hadn't opened them until recently. And I get the Translucent No Filter Setting Loose setting powder, which I love. Okay, so that was a very long-winded way of answering how's life and sort of what have I been up to, because there was a few people that were just asking that in general, which for you to even care is so kind. So thank you to anyone who asked that question. Like at the end of the day, I am just some random person on the internet. So thank you all for caring. I really appreciate it. Oh my God, you guys, you know what I actually want to do soon? I want to do another, wait, hang on. I feel like I kind of messed up the idea of that by doing a Q and A now, but who remembers when I used to go to the McDonald's drive-thru and do like a Q and A, which was pretty much just an excuse for me to be like, yeah, you know what? I'm gonna go treat myself to a McDonald's because I'm gonna also film a video at the same time. <laughs> I kind of love those car videos. And actually when I was asking what you guys wanted to see more of in 2024, a lot of people said more vlogs and to bring back the vlogs. And I have got either two or three vlogs that are like partially edited or not edited at all that are in my camera. Please keep your fingers crossed that I can find my vlog camera because it went missing after we had building work done. And I have no idea where it's gone because I thought I'd put it in a hidden safe place and I went to check my hidden safe place and the camera is not there, which is a bit concerning. I don't actually know where it's gone and so much stuff got moved around and there were so many boxes and bags of stuff that I was like moving between rooms that I cannot find my vlog camera. There is a couple of vlogs, like the whole vlog of this beauty room and the transformation is on that camera and a whole vlog of one of mine and James's holidays when we went to Sardinia last summer is on that camera. I'm gonna find it. It's in this house somewhere. Some people are just natural born vloggers, entertainers. I don't have that. Like a lot of my private life I keep private and I don't wanna be vlogging it cause then it feels like my whole life is work. And I know that some people don't mind that and kind of like vlogging their everyday stuff. But for me, like if I'm vlogging everything, one, I'm not a very good vlogger because I'm not super confident in public. Um, and a lot of the time, I don't know, I mean, you can just vlog being in your house, but yeah, I'm not very good at the whole getting a camera out, vlogging in public and vlogging other people. Like I don't really like to do that. So I never feel like my vlogs are that great anyway. And then once I've filmed a vlog for some reason, 
I just think, oh, because vlogging is not my main thing, like my vlog channel is more of like a hobby channel, like a little side thing for random stuff. I'm like, oh, like I just, I get so in my head about editing it and I think it's not a priority because it's not like my main channel and I just leave it. And then I'm like, you know what? It's been too long now. It doesn't even make sense. I'm just not gonna post it. And then I end up not posting the vlogs. But I am gonna post those vlogs because I feel like they're not bad vlogs actually for once. I mean, maybe you'll tell me otherwise, but <laughs> I'm just not a natural born vlogger guys. I'm not the best at it, um, but I do know that people have asked to see more vlogs. I'm actually gonna try this, which is by Pixie, and it's their Glowy Radiance Powder, which is supposed to be a blush and highlighter hybrid, which is kind of my favorite thing at the moment. So we'll see what this is like. Also it looks kind of bridal, which I guess is fitting with the next major topic of this video with a lot of people asking, do you have a date picked for your wedding? When is the wedding slash any wedding plans? How's the wedding plans going? Have you been wedding dress shopping yet? Do you think you know what you want? Have you started wedding planning? I mean, 50% or more. Actually, I'm gonna say like 70% of the questions were about the wedding. This is what the powder looks like, by the way. So uh, let's give it a go. I mean, it looks nice. So number one, have we booked the wedding? Yes. Number two, when is the wedding? The wedding is this year. We're getting married in 2024. Um, we don't have much time. Oh, I like that. I still find it so crazy that I used to hate pink toned highlighters. Now I love pink toned highlighters and anything that's like a blushy pinky highlighter hybrid. But yes, me and James are getting married this year. To cut a long story short about why we moved today, there are certain members of the family that we definitely want to be able to be there. Um, so we decided to bring the wedding forward a year because life is too short. So yeah, that's what we decided to do. So yeah, that was not our original plan. We have found a venue, we've booked the venue, we've booked pretty much everything actually almost. Like most stuff is sorted. I'm gonna be a wife by the end of 20. 24. Oh, and um, by the way, I don't know if anybody would have even noticed this, if you're thinking that I've lost my ring or the diamonds fallen out of my ring, which is what my mum thought. No, my ring is actually getting resized again because when I did get it uh, resized the first time, it was just at the end of summer and I got it resized. And then when it came back, it was still slightly too big. The temperature had dropped quite a lot and my hands, um, obviously like your fingers and stuff expand and swell in the heat and then they, retract. Wait, what's it called? Like the swelling disappears in the cold. I'd been wearing like this really thin band, like this one here, which I got on Etsy. I literally just typed in on Etsy. I think it's just a nine carat gold thin band, but I can try and find a link to the seller and put it down below. And that was just to kind of like keep it in place because I knew that at the start of this year, we were going to book another appointment to discuss wedding bands. So I thought I would just leave it till, till then to go and get it resized again. So that's been taken in again to get resized again slightly um, and obviously I know that your fingers do swell and then they like reduce in size but after wearing it through like days where it's been hotter days where it's been colder even on like the slightly hotter days it still felt a little bit loose and I wanted like a little bit more resistance to be able to get it off so that I don't just like lose it because knowing me I would like put my hand in a pocket or like be putting something in the bin and my ring would just like slip off into it and never to be seen again. So obviously originally we were planning for a 2025 wedding. Now we are planning a 2024 we wedding. So what have we booked? We've booked the photographer, we've booked a videographer, we've booked the DJ, the things that are maybe not as traditional. We are so unbothered about a big wedding cake because as much as I love cake, some of the wedding cakes that we were looking at are literally more than 500 pounds. And I totally appreciate if you're in the wedding cake business, like people love a wedding cake. And for a lot of people that is something that's really important to them. We would be willing to pay more for a wedding cake if dessert was not included in our catering package. With the venue that we went with, they don't allow you to bring in your own catering, which is a bit of a pain, but you know what, their food looks really nice. Something that was actually great because we decided to move it forward, most of the venues that we looked at were doing some last minute deals for 2024 because supposedly a lot of people wanna get married in 2025 because one, the date, like the year of 2025 is like a nice number apparently. And they said like obviously with the cost of living and stuff, like less people are in a mad rush to get married and they're sort of like wanting to save for a little bit longer before they book a wedding. So most of the venues that we looked at 
that we're doing like special offers with either like the venue or the venue and the catering if we were getting married at this same place but next year it probably would be out of our price budget and we wouldn't be getting married there so that definitely helped also we are not getting married on a saturday which again i think is another big thing like if people are wanting to get married on a saturday uh because then everyone's more likely to be able to come not only are those dates mostly going to be taken up this year um so for most of the venues that we were looking at saturdays were taken anyway and secondly getting married on a saturday is the most expensive day of the year to get married so if you pick another day you're much likely to get a much better deal on your venue and your catering and maybe other things as well so that's another thing i would say if you're trying to save a little bit of money on your wedding um don't get married on a saturday i mean obviously it's difficult if you have family members that are either like teachers or doctors or or like a job where it's more difficult to take time off. By the way, that was the Kosas Airbrow in the shade Medium Brown and the Bare Minerals Brow Master in the shade Coffee. I'm gonna use this new palette from Beauty Bay, which I just did a little TikTok and Instagram, which I'm gonna post that on YouTube shorts, so it'll probably be up by the time you've seen this, but it is such a gorgeous, like grungy, but also neutral palette. This color, it's like a sparkly champagne. It's so gorgeous. Beauty Bay make the best limited edition 20 pound palettes like these are some of my favorite palettes ever so i was so excited to see they've done another one anyway back to what i was saying i understand that um saturdays most people are going to be able to come to your wedding most likely however i think for most people that are able to get time off work if they want to be at your wedding they will make sure that they're there and they will like book a day off well i know like speaking from my perspective if i did have a nine to five a wedding would be something that i would be more than happy to book a day off for i mean obviously it depends on your circumstance and your situation but by not getting married on a saturday you're probably going to save yourself a hell of a lot of money so what we've decided to do for our cake is just get like a simple cake Cake, and then we're gonna have cupcakes on like a tiered stand kind of thing because I'm not gonna lie I've been to a couple of weddings where they've actually forgot to cut the wedding cake and it's got to the end of the wedding They've been like, oh my god, we didn't cut the cake or if they did cut the cake Barely anybody has eaten any cake and then a lot of it goes to waste and then like people are taking it home to put in their freezer And I'm just like what's the point? So we're not spending tons of money on a cake um, also as well We're doing most of our own decorations because I quite enjoy being creative and the venue that we've picked anyway, like it's quite pretty as it is. It doesn't really need that many decorations and there's things like fairy lights that you can make use of that are there already. So it doesn't need that much decoration. So we're gonna make most of the, well I say we, I doubt James will have anything to do with it because he does not have many creative bones in his body, but I do. And so does my mum and so does James's mum and so does some of our family. So we're gonna do some of them ourselves because I actually think it will be quite fun. So the wedding planning I would say is going well. We're doing a pretty good job so far and it's been a little bit stressful but mostly quite fun like I made our own save the dates because I quite enjoy doing that I'm gonna make our invitations as well the main thing that was actually so time consuming and was a little bit stressful was once we decided that we were gonna get married in 2024 trying to find a venue was probably the most stressful bit because there were so many venues that I found I was like oh my god that looks stunning and I kind of thought like yeah that will be great like let's get married there and then I'd look into their private pricing and it would be like 15 grand just for the venue hire not including any food or anything and I was like are you having a laugh I have been brought up in quite a thrifty household and like finding bargains and stuff and so the idea of spending so much money on one day of my life does make me feel a little bit sick I'm not gonna lie I'm also trying to tell myself that I'm like so the one day that you're allowed to treat yourself in your life is probably your wedding day <laughs> <laughs> the main thing is that you're happy, that you enjoy your day, that whoever you choose to invite, whether you choose to invite people or whether you're just like eloping the two of you, obviously the main reason for you getting married is so that you can be married and be husband and wife or wife and wife or husband and husband or you know, like however you identify, like that is the most important thing, that you are together, like you're joining in a union. And I think no matter what you do to celebrate that, the people in your life that love and care about you, they're not gonna care how much money you spend on a wedding. They're gonna show up no matter what, you know? And then the next question was, have I I found a dress and as of two days ago I did actually find a dress I need to get it altered because I went for one that was off the peg which basically means that you take it away on the day I got mine from somewhere called wed to be where they have like stores I think all over the UK they are a little bit cheaper for that reason you don't get all like the Prosecco and the champagne and stuff and the regular sort of bridal treatment when you go in but I went with Ellie who is my best friend if you are very new here and she's also my maid of honor and I also went with 
with my mum and we went to two different stores and they have a few different stores in London. The first one that we went to was a little bit disappointing because they didn't have any of the styles that I'd seen on the website that I liked. And I'd screenshot a few before I went in hoping that they would have them and that I could try them on, but they didn't have them. And then what I didn't actually realize until you get there is not every store has a sample of all of the dresses on the website. So what you're better off doing is phoning up ahead to ask if they have the styles that you like the look of. So that was obviously my fault because I didn't phone to check beforehand, but I thought they would like have one, but they didn't have any. <laughs> then obviously it was a bit of a fail because they were putting me in dresses that I knew I wasn't gonna like because I'd seen them on the website and they weren't really ones that I was interested in. I'm not a massive dress person anyway. Like I'm so comfortable just not being in a dress. <laughs> just none of them felt like they were me. So I left there feeling a little bit disheartened because I was like, oh, like am I ever gonna get that feeling of, you know, like the excitement of feeling like a bride and am I ever gonna find a dress that I'm happy in? And I was actually really thinking that I was gonna end up ordering one off of Etsy because there are some gorgeous Etsy sellers that will make like custom dresses and they were a lot more to the style that I kind of liked. I think one of the stores that I was looking at was called Lace Bridal. They have some gorgeous dresses. And my plan was that I was gonna order one off of Etsy and do like a custom made kind of thing because they're a little bit cheaper that way. They were around like five, 600 pounds. But what I wanted to do first was go into another wedding dress store and try some more on just to get an idea of the shape that I definitely wanted because I wanted to rule out like, you know, there's so many different styles like A-line and fitted like mermaid dresses and sheath dresses and ball gowns. And you know, there's a lot of different styles of dress. So a couple of days ago, went to another wed to be store. I phoned up in advance to ask if they had some of the styles that I'd seen online. They did, they had three of the styles. So I tried on those three styles and actually the last dress that I tried on, so all together I tried on eight. The last dress that I tried on, she put it on. I was kind of umming and ahhing and then she put the veil on and I was like, I started getting a little bit emotional. I didn't cry, nobody cried. It wasn't like a big like, oh my God, yes to the dress. It was kind of like a, yeah, you know what? Like I was looking in the mirror, I had a big beaming smile on my face. Obviously like once we're married, I will show you some of the pictures of that day maybe Because um, Ellie was taking pictures and videos of me in the dresses anyway Just so that I could look back on them and because I feel like some of them look so different on camera to how you see them in the mirror So it's so helpful to have like the pictures to look back on but yeah I just look back on those, those pictures and I've got this big beaming smile on my face and I was looking in the mirror like Yeah, you know what? I feel like a bride and I feel beautiful in this dress and I can see myself walking down the aisle in this and my mum was like I'm not sure you're gonna find one better than that. And I was like, you know what? I think you might be right. And I didn't wanna leave it and think about it because then if I went back another day, the way that the, the wed to be stores work is that somebody could just come in and buy that dress and then you may never see it again. So I was like, you know what? I am gonna take it away today. And I decided to get it there and then. And it, it's not in my size, so it does need altering, but I've already found somebody that can do the alterations. So I now have a dress, which is, very exciting. Sorry, I'm just going over this eyeliner with some of these like purpley pinky shades from the palette, the shimmers. The one kind of negative experience I had of like shopping for a dress that way is that if you try on a sample that is too big for you, they aren't allowed to clip it because like they were just holding the dresses up to me because obviously they are off the peg and somebody could just walk in and buy that dress. They're not allowed to clip the dresses because it could damage them. And then obviously if you don't decide to buy it, somebody else might want to come in and buy that dress and then you've like clipped up the dress and potentially damaged it in the process. So that was the only thing, like obviously if you're trying a dress that doesn't fit you, it's kind of hard. It's harder to tell um, what it's gonna look like because you just kind of have to like hold it up yourself or like the person that's working that has to hold it up for you and they can't clip it up, which is kind of frustrating, but I guess that, I mean, that's what you have to expect at those kind of places. I'm just using that shade Girlfriend, which is this one, which, oh my God, is such a nice glittery color. Another question, which I think I have answered before is, am I gonna be doing my own makeup for the wedding? Yes, I am. And am I gonna be doing videos about wedding makeup? A hundred percent. I'm gonna start doing some trials relatively soon, like a drugstore makeup look um, and just a general wedding makeup look with the products that I may most likely use on the day. But yeah, I need to test out some more of my foundations because I have quite a few that are popular wedding foundations, but I can't remember what I think of them. So I'm definitely gonna test those over the next few months. A few people also asked if we're planning the wedding 
ourselves or if we've got a wedding planner. We ended up not going for a wedding planner because I think the thing that was the most time consuming was researching the venue. Because the venue has in-house catering, that like was one thing that was ticked off the list anyway. And once we'd figured out that some of the stuff we were doing ourselves, I was like, you know what? I don't think we need a wedding planner. I'm just gonna use a little bit of this, which is by Pixie and it's their crystalline eye stuff, which looks kind of similar to Made by Mitchell, oh, what's it called? Drip drip, how could I forget? So I'm just gonna take some of this on my finger and like pat it on my eyelid and see how we go. Ooh, it's quite chunky actually. I feel like if you were to paint that straight onto your eyes, it might go a little bit patchy because it's sort of, it's like flakes. But just dabbing that onto my lid, Seems to be working quite well. A few other people have been asking if I'm gonna document stuff about the wedding, as in like the wedding planning, or I guess just like the wedding in general. In terms of like posting content from the wedding, I mean, I'm not gonna be vlogging on my wedding day or anything of that sort. Yeah, we may choose to share part of the wedding video, but obviously I don't wanna promise that because there might be stuff in there that's like really personal. But no, I would definitely share some bits, just definitely not everything. But you can bet there will be some wedding pictures for sure. And then a few people asked if we have any, if we or me have any travel plans for 2024. Currently actually no, we don't have anything booked. We were wanting to go to Australia at either the end of 2023 or the beginning of 2024. We kind of ruled Australia out of this year because we thought maybe that would be a bit much because Australia will probably be a relatively expensive holiday. So unfortunately we're not going to Australia this year. We might do that next year, which I'm really hoping that we will. I kind of wanted to do Australia for the honeymoon, but James is keen to go somewhere that is like super relaxed. And I do kind of agree with him on that. I feel like your honeymoon is the one chance that you, well, it's not the one chance, but everyone seems to just go somewhere like super chilled and peaceful for their honeymoon. So we will probably just do that. But definitely Australia at some point, I really, 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 really want to go to Switzerland at some point. I'd love to go to Norway. Part of me is like, do we just book like a couple of days last minute trip? Because I think, I think it was last year for my birthday. No, it was when I turned 25. We booked like a last minute trip to Iceland, which cost like 400 pounds. I think it was 400 anyway. Like it for Iceland, it was really, really affordable. So I kind of want to do another one of those. I mean, obviously not to Iceland at the moment because they have a few erupting volcanoes. But for our honeymoon, a few people had recommended Antigua to us, which I'd never really thought about before, but it looks absolutely stunning. If anyone has any recommendations for places for honeymoon, let me know. I'm going to use these little individuals, which uh, were sent to me from a brand called Maya Lashes. These are the Celeste individual lashes. So let's give these a go. They're just some little clusters, which I love. They look very pretty. Oh, somebody actually asked, which is so sweet of you. Somebody asked, how's your dad doing? In case anybody is new here or in case you didn't watch sort of like my previous Q&A slash life update kind of thing. My dad actually had prostate cancer last year. He was diagnosed with it. Um, He is doing incredibly well now, touch wood. Yeah, which is amazing and obviously like the best outcome that we could have ever hoped for. He had surgery at the Royal Marsden and it all went to plan and yeah, he's doing really well actually. Thank you for asking. That's very sweet of you. A few people asked if I had any goals or like New Year's resolutions for 2024. Did I even make any New Year's resolutions? I feel like I kind of gave up on making New Year's resolutions because I never seem to really stick to them. Something that I'm very big on this year is if there's things that I don't want to go to, like especially when it comes to like brand events and stuff, I'm not going to force myself to go. Because last year there were some events that I was like, oh, you know what? I'm going to go to it. Like I'm going to push myself out of my comfort zone and go. And then I went and like didn't even enjoy myself. And I was like, why did I put myself through all of the stress and anxiety? And there was actually a few events last year that I had actual panic attacks before I went to them. And then I came home and was like, why did I do that to myself? And I am all for pushing yourself out of your comfort zone and overcoming your anxiety. And like, I'm proud of myself for going to those events, but there were some of them that just like, aren't the kind of events that are for me. Like I said, like a lot of people in this in industry are very extroverted and I'm quite introverted. And I just, that's just how I am as a person. Like I don't particularly enjoy big group events anyway, like in my general life. And I'm actually, I'm the type of person where if you are like best friends with me and I've known you for a long time, then I can be extroverted for sure and I will really come out of my shell and be completely comfortable and will be like more loud and excited and like really get into stuff. But when it's people I don't know, I struggle. And so this year, I'm not gonna force myself to do anything that I don't wanna do. Cause yes, it's amazing to challenge your anxiety and push yourself to do stuff that maybe you wouldn't have done before, but you're not gonna enjoy everything. Like there are situations where I've been able to overcome my anxiety and actually been and enjoyed an event, but then overcoming my anxiety and going to an event and then still 
not enjoying it, that doesn't mean like that's nothing to do with me failing as a person because I've not enjoyed it. Like that's just people's different preferences and what kind of activities you like. Does that make sense? So I guess that's one of my goals. Um, and to just keep doing the things that I enjoy. And I am gonna finish off this look with the ColourPop, which I also bought at the same time as the powder, just a tint lip crayon, and I got the shade Gimme S'more. It's this chubby little lip crayon, which looks quite cute. Oh my God, that smells like mango. Mango or peach. Oh my God, that smells so nice. What the hell? Mmm. It feels really nice. I mean, it's supposed to be a lip tint. I can't really see it leaving that much of a tint because it's quite a light shade. Let me just see if I like wipe it off my hand. I mean, it kind of just wiped off, but hmm, that feels really nice. I love that eyeshadow palette. And actually that pixie eye glitter is actually really pretty, just like dabbed over the top of that. Also, those lashes are really cute. I literally did two little clusters on each eye. I don't understand how I can brush my hair at the start of a video, and then by the time it comes to the end of the video, it literally looks like this. What has happened behind my back that I can't even see? Because I did nothing. I did nothing to it. Just stay. Anyway, that is it from me. I hope you've enjoyed listening to me ramble and give you some life updates. There's a lot of exciting things happening this year. Well, I mean, I say a lot. I'm getting married. That's the main thing. I promise you that's not going to become all of my content. I will still be doing regular content, but there will just be like a few wedding -y kind of videos thrown in there. But thank you all for asking me questions. Thank you all for caring, to be honest. Like I said, I'm just a random person on the internet. So if you wrote me a question, thank you. I appreciate it. I hope you're all doing really good. Let me know how you're doing in the comments down below. And if there's anything else you'd like to see from me, if you like this kind of content, feel free to subscribe, give this a thumbs up. That's really helpful. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.